This is a tissue section of a human penis, and if we look at the center of the section, we can see three erectile tissue masses. On the dorsal surface, we'll find two paired structures. This is our corpus cavernosum, and in the midline, on the ventral surface, this is where we find the corpus spongiosum. And it's the corpus spongiosum is where actually where we're going to find our penile urethra. And surrounding all three of these erectile tissue masses, we can see this dense irregular connective tissue that's going to surround all three of these structures. And we can notice that the, this dense irregular connective tissue is thicker around the corpus cavernosum. So this is their, their tunica albuginea, and it surrounds all three of these layers, or three of these uh, erectile tissue masses, and it's thicker around the corpus cavernosa compared to the corpus spongiosum, because if this layer was thicker around the corpus spongiosum, and we had an increase in pressure due to all the blood that's going to be infiltrating this region, this increase in pressure might occlude the penile urethra which we don't want because it'll obscure the flow of the seminal emissions. So if we have a thinner layer of this tunica albuginea, the increase in pressure in here will move outwards as opposed to moving inwards, which could occlude the penile urethra. So the region in between the two corpus cavernosa that's filled with, the, with this uh, dense regular connective tissue has a specific name. It's called the pectiniform septum, and in some cases this area may be incomplete. So you may actually see the two masses of the corpus cavernosa meeting up with one another. So how these, um, how these erectile tissue masses actually fill with blood is through this area that's outlined in green. This is a helicine artery, and they have a fairly large muscular wall or muscular coat of their tunica media and with parasympathetic innervation or stimulation this muscle layer is going to dilate it's going to relax and then it's going to help perfuse and bring all the blood from its lumen directly into this, these venous sinuses that are lined with endothelial cells so each one of these corpus cavernosa regions as well as the corpus spongiosum has these venous sinuses and then they're all going to be filled with blood and engorge and help produce an erection. And that all has to do with the blood flow coming through this helicine artery. So if we look at the corpus spongiosum now, we can look at the special features of the penile urethra. So the urethra is lined by a pseudostratified columnar epithelium and then we're going to have some secretions of a special gland called the paraurethral gland of Littre that we can see outlined in this sort of submucosal region. So we can see these pale stained cytoplasms over here of these cells. These are our paraurethral glands of Littre and they're going to help secrete mucus that are going to protect this pseudostratified columnar epithelium that is characteristic of the penile urethra. So it's going to protect it, uh, the lining from the flow of urine that normally passes through the penile urethra. So not only will we find these glands just on one side of the section, but we actually see them all around. So we'll see them up here, we'll see them on the left side as well down here, there's some over this way, and down here. So this whole region is filled with these paraurethral glands. Since this, the penis is surrounded by skin, we should expect a layer of stratified squamous epithelium. And that's exactly what we can see here, lining the most external boundary of the penis. And here, we can see this layer of dead skin cells that is sort of sloughing off. This is called keratin. So this uh, type of epithelial lining that's surrounding the penis is considered a keratinized stratified squamous. And in some regions, like this one we've identified here, we can actually see a sebaceous gland that is going to be opening up onto the skin surface.